going on, party people? So, semester is finally over, thank God. And now I have some time to make a couple of videos. And uh, someone requested some graph theory proofs, so I got one for you today. And this one involves Ramsey theory. I hope you find it interesting at the very least. Um, and if this is well received, then I'll make a couple more. But this one is gonna be more of a visual proof than a rigorous one. Um, just because I don't feel like it's necessary to write all this out in set notation. I think it, it, it suffices just to, to draw some stuff and, and show you with some graphs. So let's hop into it. Well, the purpose of Ramsey theory is to try and find the smallest complete graph. Let's rewrite this proper notation. That's k sub n. Ramsey theory attempts to find the smallest complete graph on some n vertices which satisfies this requirement, which is that it requires, it wants to satisfy either a complete blue subgraph on P vertices or a complete red subgraph on Q vertices. So in this case, a complete graph on three vertices is a triangle. We're talking about k sub three here. And I'm gonna show you that the minimum complete graph size in order to have either a blue or red triangle is gonna have to be a complete graph on six vertices, which I've already drawn here. So we're gonna assume, even though I know it for a fact, we're gonna assume that K5, the complete graph on five vertices, so a pentagon that looks similar to this, is not gonna have um, enough vertices and colored edges to satisfy a red or a blue triangle. Red or, red or blue are just colors I'd use in my text and I think also commonly um, elsewhere. It doesn't matter what color it is, we're just talking about some coloring. So this does not have to be proper. A proper coloring would mean if this edge here is some color, then every edge adjacent to it must be a different color. But this can be any coloring whatsoever. So we could have um, neighbors of one vertex all the same color, all different colors, it doesn't matter. Well, actually it needs to be two colors, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter what colors those are. I'm just using red and blue, just because that's what I'm familiar with. This is the complete graph on six vertices this is k sub six or just k six i think most people call it and i've just randomly colored these vertices and if you were to look you would see that there's at least a blue triangle a blue complete graph on three vertices there may also be a red one maybe not with the way i've drawn it but there is a blue in here from this vertex to this one to that one to that one so let's talk about the different possibilities so this is a complete graph on six vertices, which means every vertex is connected to every other vertex, which means every vertex has five edges incident to it. One, two, three, four, five, the same with all six of them. And we only have two colors to choose from, which means via the pigeonhole principle, every vertex must either be all the same color, whether that's red or blue, it doesn't matter, or it has to have three of one color or two of the other, just because we have two options and five iterations of that option. I don't know why I'm holding up four, five iterations of that option. So I've drawn basically the two scenarios that we have. Let's talk about this one first. All of these are blue, but the same logic applies for if all of its incident edges were red as well. And I've, I've colored all of these red just to show it different from this because obviously if these edges were also blue as well then we'd be done we'd have made a a, a blue triangle in this case uh, th these are just subgraphs of this of course so so let's see what happens when we color some of these blue and some of these red so i just randomly chose these two i made these two red and this one blue and as you can see as a, a an induced subgraph three vertices, a triangle. I've made one here from this vertex to this one, to this one, and back to this one. Draw it again just to make it obvious. From here to here to here. And that would, that would show up regardless of which way I colored these. If I made these all red, I would have made a red triangle from here to here and here to here. And same thing for these other ones. So it doesn't matter which way I colored it. One is, one is gonna have to show up just because Again, the pigeonhole principle, there's only two options, and in this case, we had three options, or three iterations of that option, which means since all of these outer edges were red, if any two of these were red, 
it's going to make a, a triangle. So if I had made this one red and this one blue, it would have made a triangle here. If I had made this one red and this one blue, then it would have made a blue triangle, etc. That's That also applies if all of these original incident edges to V were also red. We would just switch the color, so we would have made a red triangle. So let's talk about this one over here. This covers our other option where all of the edges incident to V are different colors. I didn't put them in any particular order. I just tried to randomly do it. So let's see what happens when we make, when we just, when we complete our graph or begin to complete it, I should say. So let's say, let's go from here to here. Get our blue one again. Make this one blue. Mm -hmm. So there was no way to avoid it. I randomly colored these, and now we've made a red triangle from this vertex to this one, this one to this one, and back to our original one. It wouldn't make any difference which way we colored it, because again, we have to do this more than two times, and there's only two colors to choose from. So it's gonna end up such that we're gonna make an induced subgraph, which is all one color, which is a triangle. This gets a lot more complicated when we're talking about different types of complete graphs we wanna make. Uh, this, the proof process gets a little more challenging when P and Q are not the same number. And when these numbers begin to get very large, like say like five and six and higher, this number, this complete graph that is required to satisfy these conditions gets very, very large. And as far as I know, this is an MP problem, so it gets exponentially more difficult. And I don't know off the top of my head whether or not there's an algorithm that exists in computer science or elsewhere that finds K sub N for any P and Q. This is basically one of the, one of the more simpler ones that you could do. Obviously, if we're talking about a complete graph on like one or two vertices, one is trivial, two is very, very easy to illustrate with a square or a pentagon or something like that. This is basically the simplest one I can do that still shows a little bit of complexity when it comes to our random colorings of all the different edges and all of the possibilities for V's neighbors based on their different colorings and whether or not they're all the same or if they're mix and match and what type of possibilities that makes or lack of possibilities that makes for um, coloring the rest of the uh, incident edges. So hopefully it was interesting at the very least. Um, like I said, if you guys like this, I'll try and find some different ones that are a little more rigorous to cover and I'll make a video on those. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.